Kristen. And I'm Bethany. And this is Looking for the Middle, the Christian girl's guide to modern dating. We're here to help you date with confidence while honoring the Lord and to show you that your identity and contentment are in Christ. We're going to give you the tools that you need to date successfully and be set up well for success in a godly marriage. If you've ever felt like you didn't really belong with any of the extremes in dating today, well, you're not alone. Neither did we. And that's why we're here looking for the middle. Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of Looking for the Middle. Thanks for joining us. We are excited, as we always are, to be with you today because we have quite the conversation ready for you. Now, in case you misread the title like I did when we were getting ready to start, it doesn't say what to do when you're the only person left. There has not been an apocalypse. There are no zombies. So when you're the only single person left. Oh, you're not left behind. <laughs> nope. The rapture good. has not happened. <laughs> we're all good. What if it did happen between when we recorded this and when it was supposed oh, to come out? that's trippy. Wouldn't that be we- I mean, it's next week, so I don't feel... I mean, you never know, I Nobody guess. knows. True. Anyway. All I know is that if an apocalypse were to happen, your girl would not be surviving <laughs> real long. I have fully <laughs> accepted the fact that if there is an apocalypse or a purge... And I can't get to my parents' house. I will probably just like someone will find me like in my closet in the fetal <laughs> position and just kill me and take all my stuff. Like I am just not like heaven sounds better, honestly. Oh, totally. Than 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 having to mess with all that. Yeah, no. But now my dad has an apocalypse kit. Have I told you? No, he you does this? not. Well, he doesn't call it that. But he like is that what he had to search on Amazon to find it though? <laughs> <laughs> let's be real oh he may not call gosh. it that he but that's what it's it printed that. on the front of it yes no he it's not like an official kit it's like he's asked for things oh, oh for like and gifts put over together. the years and put like we have a um like Probably a grill you can put idea. in a fireplace like food and water like tools yeah. different things in case something were to happen like they could it's not an awful idea live on I, their own i feel like people who do that are, are moving much more mainstream than they used to it's not, yes, it's as, not as weird, weird. tinfoil hat as it used to be yeah now it, well and every time we make fun of him he's like he's everybody like, laughed wait. everybody laughed at noah when <laughs> he was like, building you're laughing now the boat. But when- <laughs> yeah and i'm like dad i will happily let you tell me i told you so if there's an apocalypse because i will need help like i will not survive <laughs> yes. on my own i am fully aware that's hilarious oh man okay so before we talk about what to do and it feels like you're only single person <laughs> left changes the whole topic for clarity's <laughs> sake don't forget to um what am i saying don't forget, if you haven't already, to sign up for our newsletter. We send that out every Thursday with a bunch of fun, extra goodies for y'all. After you've listened to the episode, before you listen to the episode, we give you blog posts and book recommendations and devotions and other podcasts, past episodes of ours that might be helpful or related to what we're talking about. There's a Hallmark movie of the month, all the good things. So you can go subscribe to that in our Instagram bio or on our website at lookingforthemiddle.com. There's a newsletter button there. And speaking of Instagram, y'all, we are getting closer and closer to the 1,000 followers. Yes. And I am really excited about it. So if you haven't followed us on Instagram already, help us meet our goal of having 1,000 Instagram followers, which I know is so like lame to all like no, the it's not big lame. people, but I think it's a big deal. It's, yeah. So you can find us at LFTM underscore podcast on Instagram. And follow along there. We get me Monday with all kind of fun dating memes. Yes. You get behind the scenes into our lives, which is all kinds of crazy, but <laughs> that's, yeah. that's for you to find out on your own. <laughs> so be sure and go and do that when you get a chance. All right, Bethany, question of the day. Okay, yes. Hold on, I lost it and I forgot. She had like two I other ones what it was. and then changed it to this one because she couldn't yeah. come up with an answer to her own question. I, I couldn't. <laughs> anyway, we won't get into anyway. that. Okay. So, this is an easy one. Oh, good. I like easy ones. <laughs> what was your favorite class in school? Ooh. Hmm. Well, oh gosh. It depended on the year. Well, you can have... I'll let you have two. Okay. Um. You can't have one for every year, though. No, that no, would no, take no. too long. No, no, no. <laughs> um, once I got into, like, eighth and ninth grade composition, like, writing, obviously, yeah. that will shock no one, uh, was my favorite. Um, I had a bad writing teacher in sixth and seventh grade. Otherwise, it would be that uh, yeah. across the board, but um, that kind of ruined it for me. Um, I also really liked Spanish. Oh, yeah. Which I, I was gonna, about that. Yeah. I was going to be a Spanish teacher, y'all, before I changed everything about my life, uh, my sophomore year <laughs> of college. Um, I was going to be a high school Spanish teacher, so I loved 
loved Spanish. Yes. So probably that. What about you? Um, over like longevity, like year over year, writing English, all mm-hmm. of that was my favorite. But my favorite like single class was the physics class I took senior year. Really? It was so much fun. You are the first person I've ever met that has said, wow, I loved my physics class. It was so fun. Oh, I did. That's fascinating. I never I had to take it, physics. I guess maybe it just clicks with how my brain works. Yeah. But it was like, you loved obviously, it. Obviously, kind of stuff. Huh. Like, I don't know. I had a really good teacher, though, too. Like, that really good makes teacher. Makes or breaks and it. And he, like, he knew it all from, like, he hadn't always been a teacher. Like, he had worked in the, uh, I don't that's remember what nice. he did exactly. Whatever he field. Had, yeah. And so then he came to teaching. And so I think it was. There was a lot of like real life and that kind of stuff, but I loved it. Interesting physics. Wow. Yeah. I'm very impressed. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I got out of what was funny. The, the one funny thing about when people ask my favorite subject in school was they always assumed it was math. Yeah. Well, you did tutoring. I tutored math literally from the time I was in, I think, ninth grade. Oh, wow. All the way until after I graduated college. Yeah. And because people need math tutors um, more than they need anything, apparently. (laughs) But math was my least favorite subject solely because it was my lowest grade on my report card. Yeah. Not because I didn't like it. It was because (laughs) this gives me the most trouble. Therefore, I don't like it. Yeah. I I loved physics. But when it came to math every year, I'm in the, you know, guidance counselor, whoever plans Mm -hmm. your schedule. And I'm like, what is the easiest math I can take this year and still yeah. graduate? Yes. I'll have that, please. Yes. Please it's and like thank honors you. this and AP that Gosh, and whatever else. Yeah, so I was no. like, no, no. No. <laughs> algebra two. Yep. I, I totally, my um, senior year math was like advanced algebra mm. and trigonometry or something. I was yeah. like, I'll take I that. I take pre calc. I don't want to take calculus. Yeah, None of it. No. I took pre calc and it was only because of the teacher. Mm. Because the lady who taught algebra three scared the crap out of me. <laughs> And my favorite math teacher ever yeah. taught pre-calc. And also the really uh, cute the really wide cute receiver boy. on the Took football team sat behind me. And he... I bet your hair looked real cute always, that year. Always. Always. He... Oh, my gosh. Wow. Okay. We're... Well. What anyway. Are, we, we could talk about that for a long time. And here he's, we are. He's happily Ten married Ten years now. later. It's the last fine. two single people on earth. <laughs> <laughs> for real, though. For real. So this episode actually came from... This was a question we got on Instagram. And we were kind of going through... It was either on a Q&A we did or just yeah. something we asked for topics. Or it may have been a couch cast. I really don't I remember. I can't remember. It came from somebody. That wasn't us. <laughs> and they asked this question like what do I do when I feel like I'm the only single person left and we're like wow I'm pretty sure a lot of people are probably asking this question so which means you're not the only single person left exactly so this is a great time for us to remind you of that and to give you some tips on we're going to talk to you about what we do when we feel this way and then we're going to talk about we're kind of segmenting it into different areas of your life so what do you do when you feel like you're only single person left in your friend group at church at work in your family and because it's different and so it'll just you know we'll give you some tips in each so let's do you kick us off with when we feel this way because we did kind of joke when we were planning this about like okay when we feel this way what do we do and it's like okay wait if we're both feeling this way, we can't, like, obviously we're not the only single people left. So what do we do? What do we do? I mean, the first thing I think of is I go hang out with somebody <laughs> spur of the moment that yeah. also is single. Um, because, and it's exactly what Bethany just said. It's funny because we're sitting here planning this episode, which clearly <laughs> means we're not right. the only ones, but we both still feel this yeah. way. And it's literally this reality check of, Okay, I can name like six of my single friends right now. Like at least. Then those are my close friends. Right. Like it's not even like the outskirt mm-hmm. friends. And so the very first thing I think of like, okay, if I'm feeling lonely, I'm not going to sit here on the couch and eat another tub of ice cream. I am going to call somebody and go do something. Yeah. And get out of the house and go do something fun. Even if it's like we've gone for drives oh, before. Yeah. We don't even have to get out of the car. Just nope. go do something fun because you can. Exactly. I mean, we went... What has it been two weeks ago now mm-hmm. to Nashville? I mean, y'all probably saw on stories that we were there and stuff. And I mean, talk about spur of the moment. It was me and Kristen and Lindsay. We were in the car coming home from somewhere one night. And Lindsay was like, I have a few days off from work at the end of the month. Like, let's go somewhere. And we were like, okay, where do we want to go? 
Nashville. Okay, sounds fun. What days? Great. And I mean, it literally took like maybe two minutes in the car to decide. And now here we are off to Nashville. Yeah. Because we can. We didn't have to consult anyone else. We didn't have to call anyone else. We didn't have to check schedules. We didn't have to find babysitters. We didn't have to do any of those things. So take advantage of those things that remind you of the good parts yes. of your stage of life. Exactly. We also didn't have to consult anybody about a budget, which is good because... No kidding. Future reference for people who travel to Nashville. So fun. Would do it all over again. Yes. Would budget more for and plan parking <laughs> yes which we still need to settle up we on do. that <laughs> parking and the food wasn't like astronomically more than i expected but it was just a little bit higher well, there was no relief from it i yeah. realized that was like, it wasn't that the food was that expensive well we stayed at this like hotel convention resort place so that all the restaurants were on site and it wasn't that they were more expensive than what you would expect but there were no cheaper options yeah i was kind of joking with someone i was like yeah i didn't want to go buy a biscuit for breakfast for nine dollars so we went to mcdonald's and then i was like actually the the biscuits were literally nine dollars at the place remember that one little restaurant that had the breakfast things and we were like yeah we're not coming to pay nine dollars no i'm not paying a nine it was at auntie ann's yes that's what it was it's a pretzel biscuit (laughs) like it is nine dollars i can get a whole thing of pretzel nuggets for nine dollars which i did i did too but anyway yeah it was just that there was no relief from Mm -mm. the expensiveness so anyway pack snacks if you go on your next trip that's definitely the yes take them to your room yeah um but i literally had the thought that when i got back of okay well i have this money exactly and it's not like i have to come home and be like Oh my gosh, honey, I'm so sorry. I went three hundred dollars over budget. Uh-huh. Ah, what are we gonna do? It's like, uh, nope. We'll just. I'm Fix the only accountability month. here. Yeah, and so yeah. you have that freedom, and so use it. Yes, and this is a great way to do that. Yes. Another thing you can do, or that we do, I say, yeah. should say, is uh, distract yourself. Whatever that looks like for you. Yeah. So again, like I said, moping on the couch with ice cream, and I. Y'all know I have a breakup playlist. Okay. I do too. Yes. It's called Kristen's Breakup Playlist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, there are moments for that. They cannot last super long for sitting in any sort of those feelings. No. And the same thing goes for feeling like you're the only single person left. So if you want to take like a five minute pity party, this sucks. Uh, okay. Now let's go do Move something. On. Let me go for a drive. Let me go run errands. Let me go walk around Target. Let me go you know exercise if that's what you do um it says whatever that looks like whatever that looks like hey there is no judgment i am getting back in the gym and it's actually been really great so good working back up where i can breathe now you know couldn't breathe last time we recorded which is kind of important if you want to exercise but go do something that is occupying your mind even if like you don't want to go go anywhere go for a walk go sit on your porch and listen to a pod i know a great podcast you could be listening to uh listen to audiobooks yeah. and know bethany ch- change is of like, scenery even within your house yeah is sometimes all you need yeah just something to occupy your mind Cook that you're something. not yeah letting it roam yeah. in that vein i would encourage you to and this is something that i have to be conscious of for myself is know yourself mm-hmm. a lot of this i won't say a lot a good bit of these things, though, you can probably, if you'll pay attention, you can probably avoid them. And that you know what things you do and, where, you know, different things you listen to, watch, whatever it is. Maybe even be people you talk to. Mm-hmm. It's like triggers. Exactly. Know what those things are and don't set yourself up for this. Yeah. Exactly. But remember, the feeling will pass. It's not permanent refer back to number one you're not really the only person (laughs) yeah yeah and that's something that my dad's been on a kick of saying this a lot recently like this too shall pass and (sighs) it's applies to more than you think it does because that's like 20 hashtag 2020 for real if we can if we can make it through 2020 we can make it through anything let's be honest except for apocalypse or purge yes apparently that (laughs) so we're just hoping that never happens um but yeah it's not this feeling even if your status doesn't change yes this feeling isn't permanent so remember that and that it will not last forever yep. even though it feels like it will yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing that i will not officially endorse but will say that i partake in <laughs> When I am feeling like the only single person left is retail therapy. Now, again, this is not an official endorsement. 
am I going to lie and tell you it never happens? No. That's how she distracts herself. I do. And I I don't put myself in debt. I'm not saying go max your credit cards out. Okay. But if you've got, you know, you got your tax return coming up soon. You want to allocate a little bit of that. And say like, you know what? I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to go to Target. I'm going to go to, I'm going to get on Amazon, which has been. That's the worst. The worst. Because it's so easy. I would advocate for in-person retail therapy, if at all possible. Yeah, that's probably true. It usually bodes better because you will buy stuff on Amazon, try it on at home, and never return it, even though it doesn't fit. At least that's what I do. No, I've st- I've gotten better about returning because you can do it at Kohl's now. I know, but I still like uh, yeah, I'm I gonna go all the way to Kohl's. Oh my gosh, what a hard life we live. <laughs> I know it's bad. Oh man, but no retail therapy. Take it or leave it, but <laughs> just saying. In the moment, it doesn't hurt. Mm-hmm. It doesn't hurt. But <laughs> again, no, no idolatry. I'm not saying that. go into debt or some bad situation. <laughs> Hear me, y'all know where my heart's at here, but. That's Treat funny. yourself to a shopping trip every Treat now yourself. and then. It's fun. Okay, Tom Haverford. Okay, sorry. No, okay. I'm done unofficially endorsing that. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. You kind of mentioned the, we've got several categories of like where you might be finding yourself thinking, I'm the only single person left. So before we jump into those, one thing I will say that applies over all of the categories we're about to talk about is that your singleness is most likely not as glaring of a topic to anyone else as it is to you. Now, this will vary based on who you're talking to. I will give you that. But especially your friends, casual friends, acquaintances, it's not that big of a deal. It's a big deal to you. And it's this huge, big thing in your mind. So things that people say or the way they say them or whatever, you're going to attribute to that because it's this huge thing at the forefront of your mind. When they don't care, they're probably not paying that much attention to it. But it's almost like a confirmation bias kind mm. of thing. You're almost looking for things to confirm this horrible way you feel about yourself to make you feel even worse, which makes no sense, but we all do it. So just keep that in mind. You probably care more about how single you are with the exception of a few people um, <laughs> than just about anyone else. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, and if you think about it, you're the way you think about your friends, you don't think Oh, yeah, that's Bethany. She's single. That is not the first thing that... That's not the 18th thing that pops into my mind when I think about you. No. And that's not even how I filter people. Like, it's just my friends. Uh Some are married. Some are not. Right. And so it's so easy for you to, like, when the perspective's shifted onto you, Mm -hmm. you think, oh, this is how people must see me or the filter they look at me through or whatever. And most likely... A kid with a few exceptions. Yeah. That's not the case. So keep that in mind. Can I just go yeah. off? Not really off topic, but off script. One. Quick it's second. our podcast. We can do whatever we want. True. <laughs> I don't have to ask your permission. No, am I kidding? <laughs> will you let me please? I will absolutely let you do this. <laughs> okay. So I'm, this is how it is for me. I'm curious to see if it's the same for you. Since we've been doing this and we talk about being single, we talk about it all the time. Everyone knows that we talk about it. Everyone knows whatever. It's not as big of a deal to me anymore. It's true. I would agree. It doesn't bother me. I don't care that people bring it up. It's not a big deal. And that is, that has been a noticeable difference since we started this. Now I'm 34 now. I was what, 31 then probably. So it's not like I was young and in my early twenties when we started this, I was already over 30 and single and kind of in that older age bracket. So it's definitely something that's lessened over that amount of time. Yeah, I would say that, so. Yeah, okay. and we talk about it more. 100%. So it's totally. funny that you would think like, oh, well, if we talk about it more, I'm more aware of it. Well, no, we actually talk about it more, and yeah. I don't... It doesn't bother It doesn't me bother much. me as much. So all of that to say, if it's a huge deal for you, acknowledge it, talk about it. It probably only feels like an elephant in the room to you. Yeah. Well, that's with anything. I mean, sure. the, the more you verbalize it, everything's made a way bigger deal in your head most uh-huh. of the time. So if you can get it out, you're like, oh, this isn't that... Why did I think that was such a big deal? Yeah, this isn't that bad. Or this is easier to talk about than I thought it would Mm -hmm. be. So don't be afraid. Or go start a podcast about it. We'll come listen to it. You know, (laughs) that helps. It kind of forces you into things. Yeah. Okay. So first category we're going to talk about is what to do when it feels like you're the only single person left in your friend group. Okay. So Bethany, what's one thing you can do to kind of help you through that? I would say first and I would say most importantly too, 
be happy for your friends. Mm. Um, and I mean genuinely happy. Not, oh, I'm going to yet another bridal shower and I'm going to paste on a smile and act like I'm happy, but I'm, you know, fuming on the inside. Be genuinely happy. And that may not be something that happens with the flip of a switch. You may have to pray about it. You may have to repent of not being happy for them repent of that bitterness and that envy and the frustration but get through that to a place of being genuinely happy for them and I think you will see such a shift in what this looks like to you because I'm telling you your friends are not happily married just to spite you and your singleness (laughs) you may feel that way and I bet we could all do some mental gymnastics and convince ourselves that it's true but it's not (laughs) yeah so that would be my first one yeah that's if you do nothing else in this category this would be it and exactly what bethany said too praying about it is your number one course of action i think if this is something you're struggling with because it is amazing how the lord will change your heart and change Mm -hmm. your attitude about things when you ask him to so well yeah think about it this way like we were talking about if you're bitter and envious and frustrated and angry at your friend basically those are all sinful things and you know we talk about a lot of things that you pray about and you ask the lord for and maybe he doesn't give you that thing or it looks totally different whatever if you're asking the lord to change your heart and wanting to truly put those things off like he's not gonna say nah i'm gonna leave you in sin like i can guarantee you those things will change if you are renewing your mind putting off those thoughts and praying for the lord to help enable your heart to change he will do that. Absolutely. Well, and this goes back to the golden rule too. You know, treat people the way you want to be treated. If you were the one getting married, would you want your single friends showing up faking it and you can tell they don't want to be there. You can tell they're not really happy for you. You can tell they're miserable and they're just kind of being it's annoying. Very yeah. It's yeah. like, this is not about you. This is about well, me. Yeah. And you as the bride, you're not going <laughs> to no. be wanting to have to constantly like yeah. temper your excitement and your joy yeah. because oh i don't want to offend my single friends so yeah be happy yeah for them just like yeah you would want her to be happy for you yeah and i think too it's good for you to have these conversations with, we're gonna get talk about bridesmaids in a second but <laughs> Mel, i remember melanie and i having this conversation because she was really sensitive to me about when she first started you know dating trey when they were getting really serious and they got engaged all that she was really good about I don't want this to be the only thing I talk about. I don't want to feel like I'm rubbing this in your face. Whereas I came back and was like, I don't want you to feel like you can't talk about it. This is huge. Like, this is a big deal. And I don't want you to feel like you can't be excited or you can't talk about Uh this massive (laughs) change in your life that you've been praying for because I don't have that yet. So don't be afraid to have those conversations with your friends who are in a different season than you. We did a, I don't know if y'all talked about this, but I'm going to refer to this episode anyways, because I feel like it's good. (laughs) But, um, the episode that you and Mel did mm-hmm. when I was on the road trip about being friends with other Just people. Like relating and like, to di- other yeah, stages. relating to friends yeah. in different stages and seasons of life. We'll link that in the newsletter uh, tomorrow, but that's a good one to yes. go back and listen to. Another thing you can do in your friend group is to hang out with your married friends anyway. Absolutely. As, even if their husbands or boyfriends are with them, it doesn't mean you can't hang out with them anymore if they're going to do couples things. Like, yeah. you can still go hang out with them. Now, balance inviting yourself along and being asked to go yes just throwing that out there read the room a little yeah (laughs) i would say if it's if if it's a couple's thing not a couple's thing but like if the guys are going wait to be invited yeah but don't say no just because they're going i think that's the difference and especially if there's social functions that like you would have gone to before oh yeah your friends were in a relationship Yeah. yeah like don't just not go because you're the only perceived single one like you can still have a good time and like i know like my a lot of my friends husbands like i like hanging out with them like they're fun and they're cool and who knows who they know That's exactly what i was about to say is okay and we'll probably say this several times (laughs) throughout this episode it's not all about this this shouldn't be your sole focus but just think all of your friends husbands and all of their boyfriends how many friends they have get them to introduce you yeah like we know married people love setting up single people so if you have some that you trust to do that encourage it (laughs) yeah exactly exactly don't be afraid of that at all yeah and then another thing i would encourage you this is more on like the caution side of things but figure out if you have friends who are not single who make you feel more single Mm. and you may need to set some boundaries with those people because 
particularly your married friends, should not make you feel worse about being single just by being around them. <laughs> yeah. And I have been around the whole yeah the gamut whatever you want i've been around people who i'm like are you actually married because you this is not even like (laughs) this doesn't even come up in conversation no i'm like being sarcastic but like laura and i talk about we have a friend who she has been married since we've been friends with Uh her never once have i felt insecure about being single weird about it bad about never Uh in all the years i've been her friend she's so great about that but then i've also been friends with people who oh my gosh he's all you talk about he's all you say he's all you refer to he you invite him to like uh, things we were going to go do together yeah well and i think the flip side of that too is talking the only thing you ever talk about is your husband how great he is and blah 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 okay fine we that's one side i didn't mean okay fine like it's no big deal i'm just saying you just said all that i'm not repeating it no and now i've talked for 20 minutes explaining why i'm not gonna talk so long (laughs) welcome to being friends with bethany it is so true (laughs) my poor husband one day he's gonna be like get to the point i'm like i'm trying do i i have wrap-up music and i'm not afraid to use it (laughs) i'm gonna gonna need that you're gonna need that anyway what i was gonna say though is i'll get you a sign for your house (laughs) like a countdown yeah thing, like cards you know yes. like when you're giving a speech in school and there was a person who had yes. to hold up the cards. cards i'm gonna need that yeah but on the other side of that and i've dealt with this more i think okay the person who can talk about nothing but why you aren't dating this guy and why you mm, aren't dating that guy yes and what are you doing to meet someone and they want like a detailed list and like all this stuff and it's exhausting it's like a dating strategist i'm like yes. i didn't ask for this i just want you to be my friend exactly yeah I'm and like, just I get you're happy yeah and sure i want that but chill yeah <laughs> well and there are more aspects to my life than just yes. that and just because like i mean i'm not assuming everything in y'all's lives is going well but i hope it is <laughs> yeah. but we so badly for whatever reason have the tendency to only talk about the things that aren't going well in our lives mm-hmm. whether it's dating whether it's Oh my gosh, I've got to get out of my job. I get, it's Why don't we talk about the things that are going well? It's like the yeah. news. Like we all want to talk about the depressing stuff. And right. I get that. Like, f- fine, it's the news. Your life doesn't have to be the news. Like you can talk yeah. about the good things and you should have friends who are going to ask about those things mm-hmm. too and know the balance of, I'm not saying your friends should never talk about their significant other, but they also should be able to balance okay let's talk about other things let's not yep. talk about you know why you're single <laughs> or why i think you're single or whatever yes. you know there is a difference yes okay so i think that covers friends right i think so. so let's go on to the next category which is in your church which there might be overlap here like maybe most of your friends go to your church but maybe they don't so and there's a wider base of people than just your friends at the church too but the first thing i would encourage you with is do not leave we have that in all caps like yeah (laughs) it's not going to be an absolute statement but again you never know who your married friends could introduce you to and it's good to have married friends who you can learn from both in like direct conversation about this but then also from observation like just observing their relationships and their marriages and their families and how they interact and and I think we've talked about this a lot on here before. That's not the purpose of church. Mm-hmm. Preach, and preach, preach. Yeah, we need to keep that in mind from the standpoint of trying to find someone. But at the same time, people who are married and people who are part of the church body who that's all they view as your purpose there are just as much in the wrong as you are for solely trying to find someone. Mm, that's good. You've both missed the mark kind of coming at it from the same I'm not from the same, from opposite directions, you've missed that point because that's not it. No. And what other season of life are you told to like leave the church for a reason like this? Yep. That's I mean, so true. You're not like, yeah. you, you know, people don't say like, oh, well, I'm not, you know, I haven't met my spouse, so I'm going to leave. Like, mm, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, no one else is using that. Like, I mean, obviously they're not, you get what I'm saying. Yes. You know totally what I'm trying to say. I'm saying. like yes. him hauling around here, but. <laughs> And not to be Debbie Downer here, but just because it seems like every non-married person at your church is dating someone right now doesn't mean they always will be. 
<laughs> okay, I'm just being realistic here. Yeah. All right. It only there has to be, work out once. There'll be breakups. There, there will be breakups. Be, it's a cyclical thing. Until yeah, it, people can until move. It sticks with one. <laughs> yeah, you never know what is happening. And just because he is with her now doesn't mean he's going to be forever. I'm not saying that I hope people break up. Again, I've been to a lot of... And you shouldn't break people up. No. Also that. <laughs> don't be a homewrecker. No. <laughs> but you never know. Yeah. So. But in the meantime, serve. Mm-hmm. Be involved. Don't just sit on the sidelines of your church. And, you know, in 1 Corinthians 7, Paul talks about the quote unquote earthly troubles that come along with being married meaning you have to be focused on earthly things because you have a spouse and a family that are your responsibility to take care of but for now while we're free of those necessary and appropriate things in a marital context use your time your talents your resources your energy to serve the body and um Spoiler alert, while that's not the purpose of doing it, this is a great distraction tool that we talked about earlier, too. Be involved. Don't have time to feel bad for yourself. Yeah. And going back to, I think I said this has been two or three weeks ago, talking about, you know, the Lord giving you the desires of your heart and Mm -hmm. how, you know, one of my desires of my heart, I believe, is to get married. That has not changed (laughs) in a very long time ever actually um we did it ever (laughs) no it didn't um and that i think we talk about you know surface desires like oh i want to be married okay well why do i want to be married Mm -hmm. i want companionship i want community i want you know to have that kind of a relationship with somebody and how even though i'm not married the lord has answered a lot of those yeah like fulfilled a lot of those desires in other ways the Lord can fulfill a lot of your desires through your church without necessarily bringing your husband there. Absolutely. So just because you're not meeting somebody at your church, that doesn't mean that the Lord can't still work in you, meet your desires, fulfill you, all these things through your church and through your community there. So don't throw in the towel so quickly just yeah. because, you know, it's like the equivalent of an MRS degree. Like yeah. it's like a MRS membership or something <laughs> at a church. Like, so true don't don't give up so quickly um and just you know see what the lord has for you there okay are we good with the church i think move on to work that's our next work 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 (laughs) spot okay so now i'm sorry when you are at work and you feel like the only single person there i would say avoid the temptation to isolate yourself um i've been there where it's like oh outside of work party activity thing whatever it is and you're like i don't have a plus one i'm gonna be the only single person there and they're your co-workers they're not your bff so it's awkward and weird and you just don't go don't do that sometimes sure but go to the thing get to know the people jump in again you never know who they know um and i would say find common ground where you can just because someone is married or has a significant other doesn't mean you're not gonna have anything else in common with them it's not like a you know you can't pass this mark because this is different yeah and why is that like why do you think we view relationship status as more separating than any other aspect of someone's life because i don't feel like any other you know area of our lives is worth like oh well they're not this so i'm not really gonna try to get close to them but if it's oh they're not they're married and I'm not or they're single and I'm not yeah it's like this thing here's my theory and I don't know if there's any factual basis to this other than this is what I find myself thinking mm-hmm. and we've talked about it a lot before where you just and I don't mean spiritually but you just assume those people are more mature than you are You're, they're kind of in a different place and that would be people like at church or wherever who are married and have kids and I I'm like, oh, they, you know, we don't really cross paths that much. And I feel like, oh, they're probably so much more mature than I am. So much whatever. And I'm like, wait, you're how much younger than me? <laughs> I'm like, wait, hold up a second. And yeah. it's like this maturity barrier. Mm. That's how it seems to be in my head. I'm yeah, like, that's you kind of still feel like you're at the kids table. Yeah. Like you're supposed to be this. I don't know. It's almost as if there's this idea. Well, you wouldn't understand. Yeah. You know? Yeah good bad or indifferent they don't understand i mean people who got married when they're 22 23 straight out of college went from high school to college to married to then having kids i've been out of college for 10 12 years at this point 
they have no idea yeah, what that's totally like. Different. It, I mean, they have no concept of how that works. And in the same way, I have no concept of what it would have been like to be married for 12 years right now. Yeah. Like, think about that. Yeah. That's true. I hadn't thought about it that way. It's, yeah, it's so interesting. Because you think about, it's almost like, it reminds me of how when you were, at least when I was in high school, yeah. I don't know if it was the same with you, where like, you did not hang out with anybody that was not in your grade. Like, it was your people. Yeah. And you didn't cross back and forth. If you did, it was maybe one year each direction. <laughs> yeah. Whereas now, that's not a big of a deal. Like, I've got, I mean, all my uh, friends yeah. at church are like, you know, they're all in their 30s. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and that doesn't matter. Or no. like, but what I also, what I think high schoolers did get right, uh-huh. or we as high schoolers got right, is when you were in high school and your friend or somebody in your class started dating somebody, you didn't just stop hanging out with them. You didn't mm-hmm. stop talking to them. You <laughs> yeah. didn't isolate yourself from them. It was just that person. And so it's like this switch has flipped. I think now you're a friend dating someone. That person they're dating is like them shining a flashlight, magnifying glass, whatever, onto your life that you don't have that. Mm. And so I think, again, this is just, this applies to me. I can't say that it's going to apply to everyone. I think a lot of times that pullback comes from the single person, not the married person. Mm. I would agree with that. And we, we guise it under, well, they're busy. They have other things. They have other responsibilities. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And then they have kids and it's like, oh, they don't have time or whatever. Yeah. But how often do you actually ask that person? Hey, do you have time? Yeah. I'd love to get together when it works for you. Like, let's yeah. make it work. I'm the one with all the free time. We don't really do that as much. Yeah. That's true. So I would challenge you. Yeah. If you're the person and you're like, oh yeah, I did kind of pull away from so-and-so, reach out. Mm-hmm. You never know what wonders that might do for you. Yeah. Well, and I think about too, uh, this isn't the exact same thing, but I love telling the story of how my friend Noelle and I got mm-hmm. to be friends because she, I was working in a nonprofit in college and I just got my own office. The other intern left. So I got my own <laughs> office. I was so excited. And then my boss comes in and tells me they're hiring this new girl to come share an office with me. I was so angry. <laughs> And so I like they I meet her. I was nice and cordial and you know southern whatever. <laughs> and so I like look you her up your on, mom on the way home. Yes, I like, did. Look. Mom, I am gonna have to share an office again with this random girl that I don't know. <laughs> and I look her up on social media. We have zero in common. Like I went to private school. She went to public school. I am into sports. She was a cheerleader and now she's like a skater. She's super artsy. She's got this giant tattoo on her arm. I am like none of those things. So we have zero in common. And so for the first couple days that she's at work, I am like, I'm rude. Let's be honest. I was rude. I mean, I was like, what I talked about the other day, Southern rude, Uh you know, where it's like, oh, I'm going to be nice, but then I'm going to be passive aggressive and like go work elsewhere because you're invading my office. (laughs) And then by the third day she was there, we started to, I don't know if we were talking about the office or something yeah. and we didn't shut up <laughs> the whole rest. And we were like, we became such good friends. I was in our wedding yeah. and we talk about that story all the time of we had nothing uh-huh. else in common and it just took that one thing to get us going. Can I say that applies in dating as well? Yeah. If you're going out with a guy and you're like, we have nothing in common. Give it a little time to find something you do. Yeah. Because, you know? yeah. And it ended up that Noelle and I did have a lot more in common exactly. than we thought. You had decided based mm-hmm. off social media, which again applies to dating, mm-hmm. that you had nothing in common. Yeah. And we do that a lot in dating, I think. That's a great point. So just don't write somebody off, whether it's somebody at work that's married and you're not, or whether it's a guy that you have stalked <laughs> on Instagram that you're interested in dating, whatever the case may be. Give it some time yeah. and look for commonalities instead of assuming that the one big thing you don't have in common is going to ruin everything else. Yes. Good call. Okay. So then we kind of took a roundabout way there, but to rein it back in on at the workplace, I would just say too, remember why you're there, which is to work. Now, is it great to have friendships with your coworkers? Absolutely. That's a great thing. But your satisfaction and your fulfillment at work shouldn't be because they think you're cool, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. It comes from working heartily unto the Lord rather than men. That's where your satisfaction comes from. And you can do that if you don't have a single friend 
at work. So I'm not saying go in and try to avoid having friends, obviously, but just as so many things we talk about here, there's a hierarchy to what is most important, to what keeping things in the right prioritized spot. Mm -hmm. And you are at work to do your job and to do it well and to get it done, not to just be buddies with everyone. That's a perk, not the purpose. Well, and it's nice too, because you're there to do something else, you're not feeling this pressure of I have to be relational all the time. Very true. So it's not like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm stuck in a room with this person for eight hours a day and I have to make conversation <laughs> the whole time. It's like, no, I have things yeah. to do. So it's like, I'm going to see you at the break room. I'm yep. going to see you at lunch, whatever. But, you know, beyond that yeah. is up to you. And so it gives you a little bit of a again, distraction yep. if you need it. Okay. So the last category we've talked about friends we've talked about uh, church we've talked about work now let's talk about what if to do when it feels like you're the only single person left in your family dun, dun, dun. which i being very honest this is the one i've struggled with the most in the past what three years now yeah yeah three basically since we started this podcast um that's not related but my sister well and we'll talk about this too but I'm the oldest. Bethany's yeah, the I oldest. I am too. Yep. So my younger sister, who's seven years younger than me, her and her boyfriend have been together for four and a half, over four and a half years. And then my younger brother, who's two years younger than me, just got engaged at Thanksgiving. I had a great big meltdown in the TJ Maxx on Black Friday <laughs> over that, but I'm fine. It's fine. We're good. Um, and then I'm, and I've had two boyfriends in the midst of all of that. Uh-huh. Um, my one most, of them twice. Yeah, or three times. How I many was times? Trying we, to give you the- thank you. <laughs> we weren't. We only dated once. Fair there enough. There have been a Fair lot enough. of. Fair enough. Almost uh, yeah. with him, but my two most serious relationships probably mm-hmm. have happened and then ended. Yeah. In the midst of oh, they're still fine and dandy and happy. <laughs> Everything's going great over um, there. So I have a whole extra heap of empathy for you if this is what you're dealing with as you're listening to this yeah. right now because this is a this is a tricky one yeah. for sure. I feel like my family is the anomaly in this a little bit. I don't think it ever factors in. Really? It's, and it's so funny the things you grow up and you just think are normal because what else do you know? Yeah. And then you're like, wait, we're the only ones that do this? Why did no one tell me? (laughs) Could have saved me some embarrassment here. I thought all the people did this thing. (laughs) Whatever it is. Yeah. That's a good question of the day. What's something that you thought was normal but found out wasn't oh write that down right. somewhere i'll anyway. do that next episode thank you um, <laughs> oh there we go okay stay, stay tuned, tuned next week <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. oh my word okay so anyway but yeah it never really like obviously my mom will ask oh well are you talking to anyone are you seeing anyone whatever but rarely and not oh well here let me help you find a way or let me do this let me like yeah you know, i mean i had a date not long ago and i've been talking to the guy for a while and we were going and dad called me while i was with him and <laughs> i mean it, it, it wasn't a super formal thing so i was like oh dad's calling me. i was like i guarantee you he forgot we're here and so I was like hold on i'm gonna text him and i was like hey i'm blah 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 and he's like oh was that today i forgot <laughs> <laughs> oh god so if you want to talk about extremes here, yeah, mine's on that end. On of that it. end, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I think it's more like my family has moved. Now my mom will, you know, ask me here and there, but y'all know that. Um, <laughs> but it's not even as much like my family's as like so. Have you met anybody? Yeah. It's it's a lot I've heaped on myself. That's exactly what I was gonna. Yes, and it's a lot of. I assume that people feel bad for me. Yes, exactly. That's what I was going to, I was kind of thinking, I was like, we, yes, place motives where they're not, I think, mm-hmm. or place thoughts in someone else's head that aren't. And I think, because, I mean, we all know within your family, this is going to typically be harder during certain times of the year um, or at bigger family gatherings. And I think that's partly why is because we sit there and think, oh, I'm obviously the only one here without someone else. So everyone must be feeling bad for me, which in reality, kind of like we were talking about earlier, most people don't think about you that much. Mm-hmm. Like they're there. It's not as glaring of a thing to them, except for great aunt Sally, maybe, but we won't worry about her. Cause you only see her at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah. It's just 
smushed together. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like and, two months the year. Yeah. And one thing I think to differentiate too is there's a difference between people feeling bad for you or pity for you and wanting something for you that you don't have. Very good point. The don't are, make them the same thing. Yeah. They're not the same thing. I know for a fact that my parents, my grandparents, my siblings, the people that are at these gatherings, mm-hmm. I know they want that for me. Yeah. But they're not sitting there just like, you know, on the verge of tears because I don't have a plus one at, you know, family dinner on the weekend. That's just me. Exactly. (laughs) I'm sitting there like, hold it together. Kristen, hold it together. I have done that. I have done that. Um, but there is a difference. So they can want that for you just as badly as you want it for yourself. But it doesn't necessarily mean that always are just pitying you all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to let those kind of merge into the same thing in your head. So be really careful preaching to the choir here (laughs) to keep those separate and know that, Hey, I just, I know they want this for me because I've made it clear that that's a desire Mm -hmm. of mine and they want to see that desire fulfilled too. And that's okay. And you know, kind of live in that more than assuming, oh, they're just, you know, sitting there. Oh, poor Kristen and her single self, you know, that's (laughs) not, that's not happening. Well, and too, I would say in most families, well, I would assume most families, probably 70% of this is going to happen at Thanksgiving and Christmas, somewhere between November and the end of the year, right? So don't let those two months of the year and it being frustrated and like, ugh, another Christmas and I don't have anyone with me. Don't find yourself in April, May, June, still trying to come out of that funk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like don't let such a small part of your year have such a heavy effect on the way you view your singleness. Yeah. It's not, it's not worth it. No, it's not. And it's, and it's not true. No. And it, you're the only person that it's going to affect that exactly. heavily if you're keeping that mindset. Because great aunt Sally, <laughs> even her, she's probably forgotten about most of it by now. She's moved on to her other, you know, yep. book clubs and whatever uh-huh. else she's doing. Um, So, yeah, just be careful of that. And I think to to take like a positive spin on this, uh, <laughs> this category of family. This is a great time for you to set an example for other people in your family on how you handle this, on how you handle being single, on how you handle life not looking the way you thought it would, on how you handle patience and waiting and, you know, um, unfulfilled longings, whatever that is. People are watching you. That's something I know you can probably test this too. Uh like. If you and anybody listening, if you have younger siblings, you learn real quick. Uh Somebody is watching you all the time, whether Uh you want them to or not, whether you want them to copy you or not. They are always there. (laughs) Yeah. The eye in the sky that will not go away. Um, But I remember it was this was several years ago and the guy I dated once, but almost dated a few other times. Uh, this was actually right after we broke up yeah and the official time a legit breakup. The legit breakup <laughs> and my little sister texted me and she it was i saved it it was the sweetest text but she was like kristen i'm so sorry like i know this has got to be so hard for you um i know that you really want this and like you thought this was it that you were you know so ready but I also really admire you for not settling mm-hmm. and for not um, giving up on what you want because things weren't going well and we know that and she's like it, it was really a good example for me to see mm-hmm. of what it looks like to you know not just keep giving in and giving in and yeah. giving in to things that you know you don't want down the road right and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize you picked yeah. up on that. Like it was, it was really eye opening for me of here's my sweet little sister who at the time was, a, you know, in high school yeah. and not only is she comforting me, but she's like, <laughs> Hey, I'm watching and I'm noticing yeah. this and you never know who could be watching, who could be paying attention to how you're handling any part of this season of your life. And so keep that in mind. And you have a really great opportunity here to point others to Christ and to um, share your faith and to share what God's teaching you through this just by walking through singleness. And Mm -hmm. so don't, you know, waste that opportunity, I guess I would say. Yeah. I mean, there's value. Like we kind of, you kind of alluded to before 
it, it, it's not always easy being the older sibling when the younger ones are married, but it doesn't mean it's pointless. It doesn't mean there's not value in there. It doesn't mean that people aren't watching and learning from that. And so persevere in that. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not easy, it doesn't mean it's bad. Exactly. Exactly. And I will say just as we'll put these in the newsletter too, but we've done a couple episodes kind of talking about this, um, how to navigate conversations with family, how to deal with being the single one in the group. We did an episode called eight things a single person never wants to hear and how to respond to them. You should definitely go check that out. (laughs) Um, And then any of our holiday episodes, you can go back in the December, November, December past episodes, but there's one called if singleness is a gift, I'd like to return it. That is my personal favorite uh, (laughs) that you can go back and listen to if you're wanting some more uh, advice about how to deal with these conversations and navigate these tougher scenarios within your family as a single person yes. particularly if you are the only one left yes so let's check that out end it there i'd say so okay guys so remember even if you do feel like you're the only single person left you're not mm-hmm. but even if you are that's better than being the only person left. <laughs> so it could always be worse. I was not expecting that. I was like, she's about to drop a nugget of wisdom right here. She's like using her hands and then. Gotcha. There you oh, go. Goodness. There you go. All okay, right, guys. guys. We'll wrap it there. Thanks, Bethany. <laughs> that was great. And on a light note. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. We will be back on Friday with a couch cast for you. So stay tuned for that where we'll answer a listener question. But until then, I'm Kristen. And I'm Bethany. And this is Looking for the Middle. Mm-hmm.